Apparently, lists are a total thing on YouTube. So we're going to celebrate our fifth episode with a list of five of the worst things that you can do for your health. If you're a glass half full kind of person, I guess you could think of this as a list of the five best things you could do for your health if you, you know, stop doing them. And regardless of anything else that we talk about on the Graysteel channel in the future, these are five things that you can change right now to make a huge, immediate, beneficial impact on your health and well-being. So of course, this video can't cover all of the bad things, but we're going to hit five of the really big ones, plus a bonus at the end. And so, no, you should not shoot heroin, sniff glue, or shove radioactive isotopes into your chest. Let's just take those off the table right now. Number one, smoking. Smoking is just pure evil. It's hard to think of anything so horribly unhealthy that so many people do to themselves. Smoking is the leading cause of preventable death and costs us billions of dollars every year in the U.S. alone. The cost in human suffering is just transcendental. Of course you know that cigarette smoking causes lung cancer, but it also promotes other cancers, including cancers of the esophagus, bladder, head and neck, and pancreas. These are all bad, but it goes beyond cancer. Smoking is a major contributor to chronic diseases like emphysema, heart disease, vascular disease, and stroke all of them major contributors to unhealthy aging. Smoking is also associated with a decrease in muscle mass, or sarcopenia, although it's not clear that there's a causal relationship and the underlying mechanisms have not been fully fleshed out. The good news is that you can stop smoking, and when you do, some of the damage begins to repair itself immediately. The cells lining your respiratory tree start to bounce back right away, and their cute little cilia, or hairs, start to wake up and clear the goo from your lungs. When you quit smoking, your blood pressure and heart rate fall within minutes, the concentration of toxic gases in your bloodstream starts falling off immediately, and within hours to days you'll find that you can smell and taste stuff again. You may be a little bit more coffee at first, as you start to clear out your polluted lungs, but that will pass, and within a few weeks to months you'll find that you don't have that disgusting wet hack anymore. <coughs> Very sexy. The risk of cancer, heart disease, and COPD start to decline immediately and are cut by half or more within a few years. And your exercise tolerance improves, which is just huge because it gives you access to the most powerful anti-aging medicine available. Physical exercise. There are lots of approaches to quitting, more than we can talk about here, with tons of available information, support, and resources for those who are serious about banishing this demon from their lives. You just might find some helpful links in the doobly-doo. So talk to your family, former smokers, your doctor, choose a cessation program, and go. If that doesn't work, try again, or choose another approach and try that. You might have to quit multiple times. I did. And that's okay. If I can quit smoking, anybody can. And remember, if you fall off the wagon, just never quit quitting. If you don't surrender to this monster, you will win in the end. Number two, eating too much crappy food. Come on, you know unhealthy food when you eat it. And the people who are selling it to you know it's unhealthy too. After decades of research, there's still no consensus on what constitutes the best diet for healthy aging, and we've all seen the nutritional targets shift around during our lifetimes. Remember the food pyramid? Yikes. But some things are constant. Food that's high in empty calories, highly processed, or of an extremely high caloric density just isn't so good for you. Your mama always told you that it was better to eat an apple than a candy bar, drink a fruit juice than have a soda, and have a roast chicken instead of an order of McNuggets. And she was right. She was always right. Whether we decide we want to go Mediterranean, Atkins, Japanese, or Paleo for health, the single constant factor in every diet is fresh, wholesome ingredients, well prepared in appropriate portions. We know that when people track their nutritional intake, using one of the zillion apps available for doing so, 
they're uniformly surprised at how much they're eating and the nutritional breakdown. I highly recommend that you track your dietary intake, and I very strongly recommend that the next time you're hungry, you make a beeline for the dairy, produce, and meat sections of your local supermarket rather than White Castle or the Golden Arches. Find a good recipe, get some fresh ingredients, and make a nice meal for yourself and your loved ones. It's fun, it's healthy, and they may even start to like you again. It could happen. Number three, neglecting your teeth. When you have bad teeth, nobody wants to kiss you, and there's just no way that's good for you. But it turns out there are other, more serious health implications of bad oral hygiene. Bad teeth can, of course, lead to bad head and neck infections, and some of them are even lethal. Dental examination can often find early signs of serious diseases like cancer or diabetes, and it may surprise you to know that poor oral health is associated with increased risk of diabetes and heart disease. And let's face it, poor oral hygiene is disgusting. And disgusting things are very rarely good for you, which is why Mother Nature programmed you to find them disgusting. A healthy mouth is part of a healthy body and has a significant impact on your physical well-being and quality of life. So brush and floss and go see your dentist once or twice a year. It's an investment in yourself and your health, and it may even save your life. Number four, avoiding the doctor. I've already been a bit tough on my own profession in this series, and I'll continue to be so because I think there's a lot of wasted motion and wasted money in modern medicine. And I think doctors are often missing the point in very serious and profound ways. But that does not mean you should not have a primary care physician and get checked out on a regular basis. Your body is a beautiful, miraculous machine, and it makes no more sense to avoid going to the doctor than it does to avoid taking your car in for an occasional check and oil change. A visit to your doctor can reassure you that your health is on the right track, or it can pick up early warning signs of acute or chronic disease before they get out of hand. In my emergency medicine practice, I've cared for thousands of patients with severe, runaway, life or limb-threatening diseases or conditions that could have been prevented by good primary care. And the older you get, the more important it is to know that your blood sugar isn't out of whack, your blood pressure isn't creeping up, and your liver, kidneys, and heart are still doing what you're paying them to do. You should have a primary care physician that you like and trust and you should follow up with her as regularly as she thinks you need to. Number five, being sedentary. Nature did not make you to sit on your butt. You were designed to be a mobile creature, and mobile you should be. The sedentary lifestyle is lethal. There's just no argument about that. Lack of exercise almost always leads to an excessive positive energy balance the accumulation of body and visceral fat, and the loss of muscle, bone, and mobility. That opens up a long and miserable road to the sick aging phenotype, with its simultaneous horrors of diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, osteoporosis, frailty, loss of function, and medical dependence. If you're sedentary, you're telling your body that it's not really needed. Your body will take your word for it, and slowly start shutting itself down. If this goes on long enough, reversing the trend and starting your body up again will become more and more difficult. A sedentary life is fundamentally toxic, not to mention lacking in the joy, power, and beauty of human movement. If that's you, put a stop to it today. Go for a walk, at least. Again, there's lots of other evil that we can do to ourselves drug and alcohol abuse, unsafe driving, unsafe sex, cage fighting. I'm sure you can come up with more. But as a physician, if you gave me the opportunity to make people stop doing just five things, smoking, neglecting their teeth, eating crappy food, avoiding the doctor, and being sedentary would be at the top of my wish list. Banish these five monsters from your life and you'll have a profound and immediate impact on your health and well-being and quality of life. But I'd like to sneak in a bonus one. Giving up. Don't give up on yourself. You haven't exercised in 20 years? Start today. Slowly, gently, but start today. 
you just fell off the wagon after your fifth attempt at trying to quit smoking, quit again. You're 70 pounds overweight, weak, diabetic, and hypertensive? Trust me, if you don't give up, things can get better. You can lose weight and get stronger and improve your blood pressure and insulin sensitivity. Take your medicine, resolve to start an exercise program, quit smoking, work your diet, and don't despair. Get support from your family and friends. Educate yourself. Find reliable information and resources to help you, like this YouTube channel right here, and other good stuff that you'll find in the doobly-doo. You remember that scene in The Last Samurai when the Japanese actor Hiroyuki Sanada stole our hearts by beating the living bat guano out of Tom Cruise? Yeah, I love that part too. But you gotta give it to the Tom Cruise character. He kept getting up. Over and over and over again, he pulled his face out of the mud and got back on his feet. And in the end, he got the girl, won the respect of the entire village, and learned how to take a bath. That's winning at life, people. Don't give up on yourself. Keep fighting. You're worth it. So what are you waiting for? There's work to do. Thanks for watching this episode of Grace Deal. Our content is provided for educational and infotainment purposes only and will never be offered as medical advice for any particular person, patient, disease, or condition. When it comes to your health, you should work closely with your physician. A big shout out to our newest power Patreon, George, and all our other patrons on Patreon who help make Grace Deal possible. If you'd like to help me make more of these videos, go to patreon.com slash gracedeal. Or if you just want to learn more about healthy aging, go to youtube.com slash gracedeal and subscribe to our channel. Thanks a lot for watching. Stay strong and stay healthy. Seriously, go for a walk right now.